instructor on LinkedIn Learning, and I am so excited to be ending this week with something a little bit sweeter because this week has truly been a rough week as we enter into the new year off of a really rough past year. So I'm all about how to find the sweet spot in work-life balance and really talking to some of my favorite experts from all over the world with all different areas of expertise so that we can really find that sweet spot personally and professionally. We're diving into lots of nitty gritty information. Yeah, there's a lot of fluff in the world. There's a lot of devastation in the world, but we're here to keep positive, optimistic, and productive in regards to all things that we dive into together. So without further ado, I am really excited to give you a little teaser as to what you can expect from today's first episode of the C-Suite Podcast. I have Wendy Wiener. You might know her as the writing guru on today's show because look, let's be real. 2020 was really hard and I'm sure many of you needed to pivot in your professional and personal self. Some of you may be might be looking for job opportunities, might be looking to up-level your portfolio of clients. Because we're heading into the new year, or we are in the new year, we are looking to build our personal brand to attract more revenue, clients, or opportunities, even press and awareness on behalf of our business. So Wendy is the it girl when it comes to optimizing your LinkedIn profile, really making a stellar resume. This girl has maybe six or seven uh, accreditations in resume writing. When I'm telling you she is a true expert in all things, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, enhance your resume technique so that we can stand out from the competition and clutter in 2021 because there is more competition in digital marketing, remote work, and obviously, um, virtual opportunities because we are all in the same position of looking to find opportunities remotely more than ever because of 2020. So that's why we need to step into the new year, right? And really utilize all that we have at our fingertips to make the most of all the marketing and branding and really entrepreneurial tools that we have to enhance our personal brand, business, and even job search opportunity. So let's kick things off with the first episode of the C-Suite. Say that five times fast. And then we're going to bring on Wendy. I'm great, Chelsea. It's so good to see you. I am so excited that you are my first guest on the C-Suite because coming into the new year, just like I said at the top of the hour, it is so important for us to really be leveraging LinkedIn because of the year that we just came off of and the amount of pivot and transition that really all of us are in the same boat, wouldn't you say? I agree. I agree. It's, you know, 2020 has been an interesting year. It's been a hard year mentally, emotionally for all of us. And um, I'm really excited to be here today to kind of give tips, insights, things that work for me, things that work for job seekers I've worked with, and uh, to help everyone who's live and watching the recording uh, power their LinkedIn profile and network in 2021. Yes. I mean, there's so many, you know what, and it's really interesting um, because I'm all about working smarter, not harder, Wendy. And my partner for the C-suite is Restream. If you've never heard of Restream, they are might be the tool of your dreams and that you've been looking for for a very long time. I know they were when I discovered them because I, me and Wendy are coming live to you all through one nice dashboard on Restream, but we're live simultaneously across Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And of course, we will have the recorded episode if you're missing us live. Um, But uh, Restream makes it really easy to connect with your audience, enhance your marketing efforts, your branding efforts. And video is an essential tool for all of us moving into 2021. So in regards to writing and video, we got you covered today. Um, And the other thing that we're going to do later in in the hour is I can actually share my screen with everybody. So um, we're going to also be popping up LinkedIn profiles to look at some of the top things we can do to enhance um, our profile 
again, stand out from the competition, stand out from the clutter online. So Wendy, first of all, give us a little bit of background on yourself. You are an attorney. You did a lot of pivot and, tra and transition throughout your career. You I have did. so many incredible accreditations and, and certifications in personal branding, writing, resume building. Give us a little bit of background on yourself. Sure. So when I graduated law school, my focus was always on writing. So in every law firm and company that I worked for, I was the brief writer. I was the person that did the extensive motions, did appellate work, um, really enjoyed research and writing as part of my focus. I was a litigator, so I was in the courtroom a lot, but I also was simultaneously teaching college writing classes, and I loved that aspect of what I did. And for me, as a lawyer, I practiced law for 12 years, both in-house and in big law and mid-sized firms across Florida. And one of the things that I realized is, as good as I was as a lawyer, I was not personally fulfilled. And many of us have been in that situation in corporate America where we have a great paying job and I was making well over six figures, but I just was not happy. And really, if you're not happy and the stars don't align for you, you can make all the money in the world and you will never feel that personal fulfillment. When I was teaching the college writing classes, the students I worked with really appreciated my insights on resume writing, appreciated my insights on, you know, how to write a proper essay, all of that. So I was teaching them all the strategies that I was using in my own career to interview and propel my own long-standing career as a lawyer. So for me, it just made sense to make this transition and open up my own business. I opened my business in 2010. And from 2010 to 2013, it was not what it is now, obviously. I was very, very you know minor amount of work, maybe a couple of hours a week doing it. And then I discovered that there was certifications in resume writing and career coaching and I started to get them and I started to really put myself out there and blog more and really use social media um, as my you know foundation to really grow my name, grow my brand, grow my business. And then February 2015, so we're almost hitting the six year mark uh, when mm -hmm. I left practicing law, uh, I just decided one day I was driving to work and I was listening to you two and I was saying to myself, how much longer do I really want to be at the mercy of someone else living someone else's dream? Law was not my dream. I was great at it, but again, it was not my dream. So I eventually decided that day, this is the day. Um, and I never looked back and, you know, I treat my business every day. Like I eat, sleep and breathe my business. Um, and you see me online and I really have, you know, leveraged both social media and published media. Uh, mm -hmm. articles, things like that to really, you know, propel myself, my, my image in the industry, all of that. And um, I haven't looked back and I love helping people find happiness in their careers, especially because I never had it in my own career. You know, and that's one of, the, one of the reasons why I admire you. You really walk the walk and talk the talk. And there are so many of us out there who are you know, deciding, do I, don't I leave my cushy opportunity? Maybe we don't have the luxury of do I, don't I, because we don't have that opportunity anymore because of 2020 to start my own business, to do my own thing, to be my own boss, um, and to really, you know, take the, the reins in regards to, um, catching what you kill and earning, you know, and earning more money for ourselves versus, you know, kind of just hitting that plateau in where we are in, in corporate world. And that's why I really wanted to start the C-suite with a take on the executive C-suite um, because you can find your sweet spot from working from home or virtually or remote work opportunities. Look at how many of us had a pivot in 2020 and we're doing it. We're here. We're and this is part of our new normal. I really do believe that we are going to be doing um, and continuing virtual learning, remote work, and pa and powering up our job search online that much more um, in 2021. But really ongoing um, amidst the the global pandemic that we all survived uh, in 2020. So without further ado, uh, Wendy. Why don't we dive into really the do's and don'ts as we are really wrapping up the first week of 2021. So many of us come into the new year with goals and, um, you know, a hit list of things that we are looking to do for our personal and professional self. So let's start off with, of course, professional self while we're on this topic. And that really can be a bit of an audit to our LinkedIn profile. Uh, I think so many of us don't take LinkedIn as seriously as we should. Mm -hmm. Let me make this very clear, everyone. LinkedIn is of the 
biggest SEO generator for your personal brand or your business, meaning helping you search high on the Google search engine um, when someone types in keywords for who you are or, or your area of expertise or your service offering. LinkedIn can really help enhance your name or business recognition and make you that discoverability factor that much sweeter, that much more um, powerful. So if you type in Chelsea Cross into Google, Yes, my website will come up, but my LinkedIn profile might even rank higher, if not be right below my website, because that's how powerful the LinkedIn SEO generator is. So that's why it's so important for us to optimize our LinkedIn profile and our even our actions on LinkedIn so that we're enhancing all opportunity for discoverability and opportunity this year. So. Wendy, off the top of your head, right off the bat, let's talk about the do's on LinkedIn that people should be doing more in 2021. So the first thing that I would tell people to do is to customize your LinkedIn URL. And we could I could walk them through the steps later on in the podcast, but customize your LinkedIn URL. If you don't, you're gonna have all these funky numbers and letters after it. So and you're going to look like an amateur. So definitely first mm -hmm. step, customize your LinkedIn URL. Next step, use a professional headshot. Now we're living in a very strange world where you may not have access to a photographer. So have your spouse, a friend, a neighbor, take a nice crystal headshot of you. And listen, there's, there's apps that you can use to Photoshop yourself and make yourself look better. Facetune, there's different uh, filters on Instagram to make your, your skin look smoother, all of that. So, you know, definitely professionally looking headshot, really important. Other thing is to make sure that you actually fill out and complete your profile, complete your experience section, complete your education section. Make sure that dates are correct for jobs you've held. If you have a business, you're gonna wanna create a business page. Also, you want to make sure that you have the about section, which is your professional summary. That's really important, too, because that is the intro to who you are. And another big piece, obviously, is the headline. That is the title of your novel. That's the title of your mm -hmm. story. You want to use specialized keywords that tell people who you are, what you do, and what value you can bring. And if you're a business owner, start to think about what clients are looking for when they search for someone like you and how they would go about finding you. Define keywords for us for some people who might not be super clear on what keywords really mean for them. Okay, so keywords mean two different things depending on if you're a job seeker or an entrepreneur. So if you're a job seeker and let's say you are a marketing executive, if you just put and let's say you're you know, gunning for a chief marketing officer position or a VP of marketing. If you put marketing executive, that could actually mean account executive as well. So you wanna begin to think about what target titles are you going after and what is your current job title? The other thing that you wanna build around your headline is keywords that would be commonly found, let's say in a job posting. So if you are into uh, creative branding, if you're into SEM, search engine marketing, if you're into product marketing and launches, that, that would be an area that you would want to build around in your LinkedIn headline if you're a job seeker. Now flip that around and that that's applicable to any area. If you're a technology executive, let's say you're a vice president of technology and your focus is on data privacy or system support or uh, you know cloud infrastructure, those would be important keywords because that is what a recruiter is going to type into that white toolbar on LinkedIn to find someone like you. Exactly. Then flip that over and let's go to an entrepreneur. So there's thousands of resume writers out there on LinkedIn. I want, when people come to my profile, I want them to know the types of clients that I truly concentrate in, right? And so that's important too. And if you are, let's say you're doing uh, your social media marketer, right? What area of social media marketing do you focus on? Are you an expert, let's say at Instagram? Are you an expert at Twitter? Maybe you're an expert on YouTube. So, and if you're trying to draw people to your YouTube channel, you may want to drop that into your headline as well as your summary 
as an area where people can find you. So again, it's really important. Like Chelsea, you do a great job of your own branding and I've always admired it because everyone knows you as the millennial expert. And that is how you've defined your brand. Just like people know me as a career expert and an executive resume writer to attorneys, senior executives, C-suite and board leaders. So those are all super important things that you want to focus your LinkedIn branding around so the right clients can find you. It's it's prime real estate. So don't waste the character counts on hobbies and things like that, because you can, if you want to add that at the bottom of your head of your summary, go right ahead. But I'm a big proponent of using search engine optimized targeted keywords that people will find you based on services they're looking for or based on credentials they're looking for in a job seeker. I'm echoing so many of the the amazing golden nuggets you just dropped because I I work a lot with people in one-on-one coaching. So if you're interested in one-on-one coaching for the new year, of course, you can head on to my website and look at my one-on-one coaching tab, uh, especially for Wendy, all slew of services that she just mentioned for her target um, uh, clients as well. Um, However, one of the biggest questions I get from from my coaching clients Wendy, is how do I optimize my profile and all of the golden nuggets you just said about keywords and don't exa- really narrow in on the who, what, where, when, why of who you are, what you do, who you do it for, and how you do it uniquely. This is really what we should be focused on on LinkedIn and also for solidifying our personal branding. Now let's, let's because uh, Wendy and I could talk personal branding all day long, okay. I just want to also define personal branding and also um, take a minute to debunk any myth reg- around personal branding that, that I've heard. One, personal branding is solidifying your, your professional and personal self online, especially for uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and even job seekers. Your personal brand, even though it has the word personal in it, is all about helping to establish your professional self and, and professional growth to enhance your brand awareness, your name recognition, to enhance your credibility online for why someone should hire you or work with you or network with you or interview you on their podcast or or their platform Um, and having an established personal brand, especially in the year 2021 is only going to help you stand out from the competition and make you a that much more viable candidate for any opportunity you are submitting yourself for. Now, your personal brand could truly be the reason why someone decides to hire you over the the competitor because of who you are, how you've established yourself, and the network you've built online. And one of the most powerful vehicles to do this on is indeed on LinkedIn, especially because it is more of the more professional job seeker minded uh, platform uh, aside from the Twitters and the Facebooks and the um, Instagrams of the world. So the, the, the time is now to really be, you know, beefing up our LinkedIn and also not only being aware of the do's, what to do on LinkedIn, but things to avoid, don't do. So you did mention one thing, Wendy, don't use the prime real estate in your about or your bio to really talk about, you know, your hobbies or your family and family is very important. But again, this is about solidifying keywords, search engine optimization optimization um so let's let's now focus on what not to do on your linkedin profile especially top of mind for the new year so first thing is you know definitely don't just dump your resume into your LinkedIn profile that's a, that's a really big thing and um I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more later as to why but another thing is make sure that dates line up so if you're going to, especially if you're a job seeker and you're applying for a job and you kind of fib your dates on your resume, but you don't change them on your LinkedIn profile, they are not in sync. And of course, I, you know, full disclosure, do not lie on your resume, but there are mm-hmm. people that will have deferring dates that don't make sense. So if you say that you worked for a company from 2000 to 2003 on your resume, it can't say 2000 to 2005 on your LinkedIn profile because then it's obvious to an employer that there's some type of job in between that you're not being honest about. So make sure that your dates, your job titles line up. Those are in sync. Also, don't forget 
that a lot of people overlook this section is the skills mm -hmm. and endorsement section. So if you drop down to the skills and endorsement section, by default, LinkedIn will rank them based on how many endorsements you have. So I've seen a lot of, let's say, general counsels who have been practicing law for you know, 20, 30 years, and their top skill is legal writing. Sure, their top mm -hmm. skill could have been legal writing when they were in law school and a, maybe a year or two into practice, but your key areas of focus, your top three skills that you should pin to the top are the most important three skills that are in your focus area or in what you concentrate on for your services. So like my top three skills revolve around the resume writing piece, um, everything that I do as a service provider. If you're a mm -hmm. job seeker and let's say you're a technology executive, your top skill is going to be technology. It could be cloud infrastructure. It could be other various areas that would you know, solidify your core skills, your core areas of expertise. So don't avoid that and don't overlook that skills and endorsement section. And then the other thing is don't be quiet on LinkedIn. Use your profile to build community. I cannot emphasize it enough. You do not have to post content every day. You do not have to sit on LinkedIn every single day to be uh, effective on the platform. There is a strategy and I'll talk about the strategy I use. It may not be the strategy you use, but there's different strategies if you're a job seeker versus a service provider that can help draw in more traffic to you. But mm. keep in mind, you could write all the best content in the world, but if you can't, people are gonna click on your profile. And if you can't keep the interest of people when they click on your profile, you're gonna lose out on potential leads for business and also potential leads for recruiters and hiring managers to reach out to you. Ooh, so now you just gave us a little bit of the, like, you know, um, some of the tips that I use. I'd love to hear some of those and I can compare them to some of the ones that I use and have seen also, you know, mm -hmm. some great some great um, interaction and feedback and results from. So. Let's move into those some tips that you use. Um, so one of the tips that I use in terms of, are you talking about for posting content? Yes. Okay, so I have a strategy when it comes to posting content on LinkedIn. I actually like, I make sure that the first three lines of my LinkedIn posts are able to grab the reader's attention. So if I publish an article that I'm going to be linking below, I'm going to mention the source, for example, CNBC, Forbes, uh, HuffPost, etc. So I want people to know that there's going to be a link somewhere down below of an article I wrote. Um, mm. The other thing that I do is I use anywhere from three to five hashtags that are relevant to what I'm writing about. So if I'm writing about personal branding, if I'm writing about resume strategies, I'm gonna use the hashtag resume tips. If I'm writing about LinkedIn tips, I'm gonna use LinkedIn tips. If I'm talking about building a network, I'm gonna use the hashtag community or the hashtag network or networking. So I really strategize on what I'm writing about. The other thing that I do is Variety is a spice of life. So I use a lot of variety in my content. So I don't like to push job search tips down people's throats every time I post. What I really try to do is showcase different thoughts and patterns of things that I've noticed. So for example, like I wrote the other day about um, not ghosting uh, people when they're job searching because this happened to one of my clients in December, got ghosted after two rounds of interviews, mm -hmm. you know, what happened, the company just you know stopped responding. But I've also heard the other side of candidates ghosting employers because they're not interested in the job. So mm -hmm. it's a two way street, right? And so I wrote about that. My post before that was an article. I wrote about you know what your board resume, if you're looking for a board of directors seat. So again, I really vary my content because I'm not necessarily trying to sell my services to people. I'm actually trying to sell my knowledge on topics because my knowledge and my on topics is what sells people. It builds credibility, authority, and trust. And that's what leads people to either follow my content or go to my website and book a console with me or reach out to me. Now, granted, a lot of people that do book with me, they're actually finding me on a Google search. Some of them are C-suite and executive leaders that don't even use the platform, have had a dead profile since LinkedIn came about. So they're not necessarily that good example of someone following my content, 
But I always tell them before you hire me, you should read my profile and see how I market and brand myself because that's really important. Um, and there are people that can't afford my services and I'm really honest and I want them to be able to benefit from free resources. So again, that knowledge that I bring free resources is really important for people to have access to when they're in my profile. And then also I try to really connect with people and write stories of connectivity so that people understand I'm also human. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna have things, you know, I shared, for example, my mom was going through terrible depression during COVID and my parents got a Shih Tzu puppy. So again, those are things that I like to connect with the readers on a deeper level. That's what engages the content and keeps it going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's so many things that I love that you just said. Um, one, just because it's so fresh, and I, if you see me looking down, I'm a note taker, everyone. So even though I'm the host, I'm still taking notes, and <laughs> especially any great quick tips that Wendy's just saying. So one, um, okay. My parents just got a Shih Tzu during COVID and my mom's feeling a little depressed because of COVID. People might go, uh, th I get this question all the time. Where's that fine line between my my personal world and my professional self? Um, even, and especially on LinkedIn because I think it has a little bit more of the buttoned up platform for the professional, for the job seeker, even for the business mm -hmm. owner. And I agree with you 100%, Wendy, that sharing some insight or intel or storytelling about your real life, your real world experience, um, whether it's the dog that you just got, the, the lull that you might be feeling from, from COVID, the fact that I'm 18 weeks pregnant right now, um, the fact that you just got married, that you just celebrated an anniversary, that your kid just graduated from college. These are real things that as humans, we are all humans, um, we can really relate to on a personal level. And it does help enhance, I think, the connectivity of your network um, and connections on LinkedIn to mm -hmm. enhance interest and dialogue and comments and conversation um, sprinkled in to your to the knowledge that you have to share, right? So I do say that there's like, you know, an, uh, an 80, 20, 70, 30, where it's um, your, your area of expertise, your quick tips, your how to's, your professional articles, your, your, your uh, resources that you love that you found, um, you know, from, from Forbes that you thought was relevant for your industry and your network. But then also that 20% to 30% of professional self to really paint the picture of who you are as, as the person behind, you know, the, the millennial marketing strategist, behind the attorney um, and the resume professional um, to help that connectivity because we are craving that human to human connection, especially as we are probably entered into the more remote and digital work life world that we've ever, you know, participated in. One of my favorite, you know, kind of silver lining things from 2020 and working so much more with remote teams versus, you know, being live in person with the with, with all these teams is how many families I've gotten to meet, children I've gotten to meet, dogs I've gotten to meet because right. everyone's working from home. And that that layer of just, you know, connecting on a personal note through your professional endeavor um, definitely goes a very long way. And mm -hmm. It's something to be said, especially for, for LinkedIn, but across all social media. So, you know, there, there are people that all they do is post pictures of their dogs and their children. I would say that they're using social media more personally than professionally. So, right, what is that? I like to say 70, 30, 80, 20, where you're, you're, you're putting your perspective professional self and knowledge and expertise first um, and then you know your personal life you know 20 to 30 percent so hopefully that clarifies ratio of how much personal versus professional to share but the other thing that I love that you said is don't sell your services sell your knowledge and that is something that I really practice as well Wendy um and so many people are always asking me, how do you work with this print? How do you work with this client? How do da, da, da. And that's because I'm, I love to create content that shares my knowledge, my expertise, and also invite others to share their knowledge, their expertise, versus every other post being, book me as a keynote speaker, hire me as your career coach, um, you know, work with me as an influencer in, in your next campaign. I call those posts more billboard, right? You don't want to be a billboard on social media. You want to be conversational you want to tell stories you want to share your expertise and your knowledge through informational yet entertaining content i call it infotainment right 
informational yet entertaining, which I hope that is what everybody thinks this is right now, right? Wendy and I are having a great conversation, but I hope to be sharing load, uh, you know, I hope to always have content loaded with great takeaways um, that you can go and implement into your profile, resume, or, or strategy for your business or marketing right now. Um, so you know what, Wendy, let me try, I'm hoping that they share the screen. Okay, hold on, let's share the screen. You might see my entire, okay, here we go, LinkedIn. So I'm gonna share LinkedIn. Let me know, okay, so I am seeing, all right, here we are. So Wendy, I just pulled open um, my LinkedIn profile. I think I'm actually going to pull open yours. Sure. As while we're talking so much, and Wendy, you're seeing me pulling open your profile right now? Yep, I see it. Okay, perfect. So I always love to give a visual behind some of the things that we're talking about on the tips or to-dos uh, you know, side. So Wendy, I'd love to comb through, just scroll through. This is the profile page, everyone. Um, right, so this is Wendy's profile page. And if as we scroll down, there are different sections within the LinkedIn profile that we absolutely should be taking advantage of. And there are to-dos and, and not to-dos um, throughout the profile here. So Wendy, right off the top, why don't you kind of comb us through each section and give sure. us like the highlights of, you know, this is what to do and this is why to do it. And I'll keep scrolling on behalf of, uh, you know, you t walking us through the profile. Sure. So first things first, you know, the branded background photo, especially if you are a business owner, is vital um, because people see photos differently than they see words. And if you could put words on a photo, that capture who you are, what you do, and what your credentials are, that is what keeps people reading. So I let people know what I do. I do executive resume writing, LinkedIn profile writing, and personal branding for attorneys, top executives, and C-suite and board leaders. I've refined that over time um, as my business changed because in the earlier years of my business, I actually did full scale resume writing for all levels and then moved into more of a niche focused area based on types of clients I enjoyed working with and being more of a specialist rather than a generalist. Um, the other thing that is a, a big selling point of my brand and really my, my company name, The Writing Guru, is based on the fact that I have this massive writing portfolio. So I really concentrate on my media features because when people Google me, what they find is article after article that I've either been quoted in as a media expert or career expert, or they see articles that I've written on various topics from LinkedIn to resume writing to career interview tips, etc. So that's you know, thing is really important. I've won a lot of honors and awards in the resume space over a number of years. Um, and also I've got six certifications in resume writing, career coaching, LinkedIn, and personal branding. So I use that as well as showcase some of the major media outlets that I've been featured in. So if someone were to Google my name, they're going to, you know, if they Google Wendy Wiener CNN, they're going to see a number of articles that I've been featured in. And that's also how I built my headline. So at the core, I mean, first things first, I'm a lawyer. So because I put attorney, that means that I'm already drawing an audience of other attorneys to want to connect with me. So that's really important. Uh, if you know, someone's looking for a personal branding and career expert, they're gonna find me and they're gonna see that I'm not just calling myself an expert, but I'm featured and published in 75 plus media outlets. And then they're gonna see the other aspects of what services I provide. Um, and that providing services thing that you guys see is something that anyone can do when you are a business owner. And I love Wendy. So, so this is when earlier in the hour, Wendy and I were talking about taking advantage of the prime real estate on LinkedIn, especially and on social media, because right on social media, we all have very small little bio sections and we all have this top banner. So this top banner I'm referring to is uh, the black banner where she has exec executive resume writing, LinkedIn profile writing, 
her, she had six times certification, 10 honors, her, her website in the top right corner, the media publications down below. This is the top banner. Uh, this top banner is what I would call prime real estate. We only have 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds to make that first impression on someone who's visiting your profile. So someone can make their first impression solely from Wendy's profile picture and that top banner right there that she has gotten so much information that solidifies her expertise, solidifies where she has shared her expertise as an expert, and also who she, uh, what she does, right? The who, what, where, when, why, um, right at the top. So. Wendy, I feel like your your profile is such a great a golden standard for what we could try to you know mimic on on our personal channels. So I'm going to go scrolling down because I think one of the biggest confusion question mark areas about LinkedIn is the about section. Now the about section really acts as your bio section, right? Oh, wow. um, so Wendy, take us through your formula because you definitely have a format or a framework for this about section here on LinkedIn. Um, give us give us your tutorial on how to approach this section. Sure. So listen, you could start off in various areas uh, depending on if you're a job seeker or a business owner. So if you're a job seeker, you really want to intro who you are and what you do. Right. So, for example, if you're a, a seasoned or experienced technology executive with 20 plus years of experience, I recommend starting out with something like that. You can start out telling people what you're passionate about, you know, what energizes you, what, what do you thrive on? Do you enjoy building teams? Do you enjoy developing technology infrastructures? Do you enjoy driving uh, organi specific organizations, let's say in consumer product goods to you know new market territory? So you could start off your profile in various ways as a job seeker. You really want to build in a couple of things into your summary, your about section if you're a job seeker. You wanna talk about how much experience you have, what areas you concentrate in. If you've worked for, let's say, a Fortune 500 company or you have an MBA from Harvard, you want to put that type of stuff in there because those are things that are value add statements that people don't have to necessarily scroll through your whole profile. So it's a different approach if you're a job seeker. You can put an areas of expertise section, which will, again, build additional keywords. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're a business owner like myself, what I really like to do is start off by qualifying who I am, what I'm an expert in, and then I talk about, you know, where the fact that I went to a top 100 law school. I'm, again, qualifying my expertise, in, in my niche area of what I do. And then I, and I tell you my services of what I do, right? And then I give my website information, my email. I really, again, bullet point, because part of my LinkedIn profile is to sell people on who I am and what services I provide. So I'm giving them quick tidbits of things that qualify my expertise, as well as what services I provide. That's how you qualify yourself as an expert. Um, and, you know, some people may start off with giving testimonials from a client. I don't do that. People can find my testimonials on Google or on Yelp or my LinkedIn profile. Um, oh, right. Exactly. I'm sorry, what? Or at the bottom of the LinkedIn profile. Right, right, right. Exactly. At the bottom of the LinkedIn profile. Um, and then, I, you know, I tell people where they can find me on social media. So that's really important. Um, again, I, you know, I set it up in a very unique way. Everyone has their own style, but I know that my profile gets a lot of traffic and gets me a lot of business because of my authentic way of how I've constructed it. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it works. Um, for you, you may want to start off with your website or if you want people calling you all the time, you may want to give your phone number. But remember, the moment that you put, you know, at the top of your uh, LinkedIn profile summary, your email or your phone number, you're taking away real estate from telling people about yourself and qualifying you as the expert in your niche. So mm -hmm. those are big things. And remember, I also recommend when it comes to LinkedIn is reusing important keywords of what 
people will search for. So if someone is searching for an attorney resume writer, they're going to find me because I've got the word attorney and I've got the word resume writer in my profile. So again, depending on what service offerings you provide, you want to weave in your keywords throughout. Um, I don't recommend doing sort of like that plug and play, what I call keyword stuffing, especially if you're a service provider, because it looks obvious. Um, but the idea is, yes, you definitely need to update your profile after listening to our tidbits of advice here. Um, I think it's really important because it can definitely lead to more opportunities. And, and this is one takeaway that I want you to remember, everyone who's listening, is that the goal of your LinkedIn profile is to get you opportunities when you're not looking for them. So yes. whereas, whereas your resume is you're applying for jobs, you're being uh, uh, pro proactive, but you're also being aggressive, right? But your LinkedIn profile is there to be a lead generator and to bring opportunities to you when you aren't looking for them. And that is the way I see all of my social media channels. Of course, you have to work them. You have to have complete information and all that. Now let's go to the featured section. Mm -hmm. So featured section is really important. And a lot of people overlook the featured section. So what I do is I try to mix up some things that I've published, I've written. The other thing that I do is I try to showcase uh, what other people have said about me. So I've been on, you know, top resume writer list by major publications and also uh, from uh, executive search firms. So I use that as part of my marketing tool, but I use the featured section to also showcase resources of expert advice that I've given on resumes, LinkedIn profiles, et cetera. But if you take everyone to the top uh, article in that featured section. So this is really golden if you're a business owner. This is probably one of my most read uh, articles in my, on my website and my blog, and it's how to research and review executive resume writing services. Now, the real reason why this is on there also is because it's a lead generator for me because once they read through that article, what happens? They are on my website. So the fact that they are on my website is really useful because now they're going to stay on my website and potentially book a consult, look at other blog articles that I've written. So it's imperative that you have as one of those featured sections, if you're a business owner, a, a link to your website of an important page where you can provide information and resources. So again, that's really, really important. This featured section is really giving a, a, a taste of a mini blog, right? So if you don't have a blog or a personal website, you can really treat this featured section as like the, the top blogs that you feel like are getting the most traffic or having the most um, uh, uh, showcasing your best expertise. Or like Wendy said, with this how to research and review executive resume writing services, a lead generator. A lead generator is a piece of content that is sharing your uh, expertise sharing your sharing your knowledge but also making your audience want more of you and that expertise where they want to indeed work with you and that piece of content can convert them to a lead or client or customer mm -hmm. so right. um that's what this featured section is, is is all about and again like these are all the sections just right here on the profile um that we can all be up leveling in 2021 to position ourselves um to to be a better candidate for all opportunity this year and of course then we have the experience section wendy which really does give a, um, really acts as your living resume, right? So for someone like you're saying, this is our passive way of attracting more opportunity. Resume is the active, sending out a resume is the active way of trying to land an opportunity. But there are so many um, headhunters and even people looking for uh, part-time work or um, freelancers or um, coaches and consultants that want to know your experience and will just go to your LinkedIn profile before submitting an, an application for, for you know, uh, hunting for um, new candidates. And this, to me, experience is our living resume. 
Yeah, one thing that I'd love for you to do, Chelsea, is to click on my logo because I think it would be important for business owners to know this is, so you have two ways of driving traffic on LinkedIn. You have your personal profile and you also have your business page. And if you're not maximizing the real estate on your business page, you could be missing out on potential followers. I actually post to my business page more than I post to mm -hmm. my personal page because with the personal page, I'm focused on engaging in human to human interaction and conversations. Whereas this, this allows people when they're reading about my business to see different things that I'm doing. So I may share an article on Twitter that I repurpose over here. And again, I, I fill out this content because this way people can learn about me. So it acts as just another landing page for people to learn about you and the services you provide. So that's, yeah. and remember LinkedIn rewards you. The more active you are on the platform, the more they showcase your profile, your content, as well as your business page. So keep that in mind if you're a business owner. So great, and that is such a great quick tip right there that LinkedIn does reward you with the more active that you are, that more, the more LinkedIn will help that discoverability of your content and your profile for you. So it's like if you work LinkedIn, LinkedIn helps work you at the same time. Um, and so your experience is of course, <clears throat> Uh, you can also add media files, video files, PDF slide shares, so that you can give a little bit of a taste. Um, really, this is your living resume, but also an extension of a portfolio, wouldn't you say? Because you get to it's share some work samples. It is, and again, it just adds to your SEO optimization, your search engine optimization. Now, one thing that I, again, that is true to my brand is the fact that I've, you know, been involved, very involved in the resume industry, very involved in putting out content. So I have a really extensive experience section that delves into my legal career, uh, but you don't see my legal career at the top. So you really have to dive deep into my legal career of like where I worked, what area of law I practice, which is why I give an intro to it in the beginning of my profile. So again, these are really important things to keep in mind is that not every person is going to stay and read through every section in your profile. So let's say, you know, and this is a really creative way to do this, but if you worked at say Google or Amazon or Apple, you know, one of the major top tech companies, you may want to put something about that in your LinkedIn headline, as well as your summary. Because if you worked at Google and you built a 10 plus year career at Google, person's not necessarily going to see that uh, until they read through your entire profile. So if you can layer that information throughout, that is how you build upon enormous visibility on your profile. I, I agree. And and also don't expect that everyone like Wendy just said is going to read through every piece of copy on your profile, which is why you want to make sure that the experience that you're putting out first, right, which Wendy's is her her resume writing her a resume writing for attorneys, her, her profession and expertise in helping people optimize their LinkedIn profile. That's the first, uh, that's the first nugget of experience you see up here. And as you dive in deeper, you get to learn more about her prior work experience that only helps show more credibility as to why you should work with Wendy today. Um, and then as we scroll down, of course, uh, you know, everybody wants to know that, you know, someone's not just being a, a phony online because let's admit it, it's pretty easy to just, you know, pretend you're an expert today. License and certifications are always great to share. Um, volunteer experience, I think, gives people more of an understanding of who you are personally and professionally. Um, skills and endorsements gives a great a visual snapshot of what people are endorsing you for in regards to um, your area of expertise. So of course, Wendy would be resume writing, public speaking, um, writing, and then there's even more if you click show more of all the things that people have, you know, given her kudos or a tap on the back for. Um, and then to me, Wendy, one of the most important things is really the testimonial section. So people, you know, testimonials and recommendations go hand in hand terminology wise on the LinkedIn profile. So you see Wendy's received 40 recommendations, testimonials um, that live right here on her LinkedIn profile. And 
I like to say um, this is a, the more important section as well, because someone might glance at your experience, read your top bio, um, be sucked in by you know the prime real estate section, but immediately want to hear what people have to say about previously working with you. And I like to, you know, give this comparison. You know, when was the last time you went to go to a new restaurant or saw a new movie before you asked a friend or family member or colleague if they liked it or if it was good or if it was worth your time? And that's exactly what testimonials and recommendations do. And your recommendations will only help power or beef up um, your Res, uh, your your LinkedIn profile, which is your live living resume for those people who are passively looking at your profile to potentially hire, network with you, work with you. So, you know, um, having those solid recommendations and, and testimonials on your LinkedIn profile, I think, are a huge help um, to establishing that that credibility online, especially here on LinkedIn. Um, and then, of course, you have the accomplishments and interest section, and that hasn't. And this is just the the big snapshot of the your 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 long profile here on on LinkedIn, which to me is the next best thing to a personal website. If you don't have a personal website, you know LinkedIn can really be treated as as such today, especially because of all the content that you could share, the articles that you can now publish. Um, you know, LinkedIn has really beefed up its video platform, the fact that we're able to live stream on LinkedIn. It is such a powerful vehicle for 2021. And that is why I was so happy to have you, Wendy, to really comb through all the, the sections with us and give people a snapshot of, of each section, dive in a little bit deeper as to things to consider for each section, because there are a lot of things to consider on, on just this one platform. But optimizing this one platform can absolutely, again, help you stand out from the competition and help you attract more opportunity for the new year. So as we conclude, because we're almost at an hour already, that's what I mean by we could talk all day about personal branding and social media and content creation, right? So now that we've kind of given the whole bigger overview, Wendy, of really the do's and don'ts, things to consider, things to take advantage of um, for LinkedIn, I want to move on to a 60 second quick tip, really punchy, something that really everybody can go onto LinkedIn or go onto you know, uh, their, their channel and do right now that could help them better their, their efforts for the new year. 60 seconds, find that sweet spot. What is that quick tip of yours? So I mentioned it previously, but don't copy and paste your resume into your LinkedIn profile. Remember that your LinkedIn profile is a living, breathing document that gets you opportunities, gets you visibility when you aren't looking. Keep in mind that your resume is hand delivered to a select number of people. It's going to contain proprietary financial information that could be construed as breaching trade secrets if you post certain information into your LinkedIn profile. But more importantly, People connect with people, and that is what LinkedIn is about. It is about networking. It is about building a network. It's about leveraging a network. It's about using that network to your advantage, whether you're a business owner or a job seeker or a potential business owner. So again, mm -hmm. develop time, use your LinkedIn profile to its advantage, and really truly leverage the platform because it can do more for you in the long run and bring you opportunities when you aren't actively pursuing them. Thank you so much for all of the quick tips and golden nuggets and value bombs that you dropped with us here on the C-Suite. Thank you so much, everyone, for such an active chat. Um, you might have seen some people's uh, comments popping up. Um, I really appreciate all the positive feedback in this chat as well. This was just our first episode of the C-Suite, um, and we are going to be coming to you live weekly with another fabulous guest and a great, really niche topic so that we're getting niche specific um, and a lot of takeaways versus broad approaches to things. And that's why I'm so glad we're able to kind of really dive into the LinkedIn profile deeper together, Wendy, because I think so many people are just like, what do I do and how do I do it? And hopefully 
there's a lot more clarity into you know your approach for LinkedIn for 2021. So uh, Wendy, where can people get in touch with you, contact you, uh, you know, and, and stay in touch with you post this episode? Sure. So my website is writingguru.net. I have a very extensive blog on there and a list to all of my media features. So I put out a lot of content and job seeker advice there. And you can also find me on all social media channels at The Writing Guru. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Wendy. I really, really, really adore you. And if you're looking for constant, great value um, for what you can do online and for your business and for your job search efforts, just following Wendy all the time, even on Instagram and her quick, quick little Instagram quotes um, are, are enough of, of a great chew for the day. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend as we're wrapping up this first week of the new year. And next week, Wednesday at three o'clock, we are going live on the C Street with Brian Fanzo, digital futurist, to talk all things marketing, digital, digital media, and trend predictions for 2021 so that we can be top of mind and ahead of the game for 2021 with Brian Fanzo. Um, you might know him as iSocial Fans, um, and he's a great friend of mine. And, and again, he's going to drop so much more information. So I hope you enjoyed today. Wendy, thank you again. Thank and we'll you. see you next week on the C-Suite, everybody. Have a great one. Bye-bye.